find a lot of people who actually are interested in being able to act like you, yeah. but then there are a lot of people who actually want to try to speak like you. It seems like your voice yeah. and your yeah. accent yeah. is something that's in here a lot. Yeah, you don't understand it. In, in England and America, everybody impersonates me. <laughs> and I have this voice which to me sounds like everybody else. I think I sound like everybody else in England, you know. But there's something about my voice and everybody impersonates me. I just saw a movie with two men going on a boat. It's called The Trip. They're going on a boat up the Thames. And their entire conversation is trying to outdo each other with impersonations of me. <laughs> it's me. They're, and they're doing these impersonations. And then I, I was watching a, 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 um, an American TV program and they had a lot of famous movie stars impersonating actors that they could do. And one of the best impersonations of me was by Tom Hanks. <laughs> and he did this impersonation of me, but I got to a stage where I can do it now. Can you impersonate me? <laughs> so can we hear Michael Caine yeah. doing Michael Caine? They always talk like that. <laughs> and they say, uh, uh, my name is Michael Caine. <laughs> Not many people know that. <laughs> and that's how I'm supposed to talk. <laughs> so I don't talk like that. But what it is, is there is a rhythm to my voice which is cockney which is what they hit on. Very clever impressionists hit on the rhythm of your voice, not your actual voice. And so the rhythm, I can never change. I mean, I'm doing it now. You, would, you, you wouldn't talk in this rhythm if you weren't a cop. <laughs> I don't know. No. Um, but you can impersonate other actors as well? Uh, yeah. Does he work? Um, uh, no, I... Uh, no. <laughs> That's not your favorite? John Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> and I... I I remember John Wayne, there was a big charity do, and you, people were in the audience like millionaires putting up $50,000, $100,000 for someone to do something. And, and someone put up $100,000 for John Wayne to do, to be or not to be from Hamlet. <laughs> and John came up on it and they gave him the speech. And he didn't know what it was, you know. <laughs> so he went, to be or not to be? <laughs> that is a question. <laughs> Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer this length in our own. <laughs> Who wrote this shit? <laughs> I was taken to America to star in my first movie by Shirley MacLaine and she took a picture called Gambit and I, she wasn't in town. So they shoved me in a very luxurious suite in the Beverly Hills Hotel. I'd never been to Hollywood before. And, I, and, 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 and for two weeks Shirley never turned up because her, picture, her other picture went over and scheduled so there wasn't a party to introduce me. So nobody knew me so I sat in a very luxurious hotel suite in the Beverly Hills Hotel for two weeks with nothing to do. So I used to go down into the lobby to try and see film stars. <laughs> and I saw, I, 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 uh, I saw Jane Russell. I saw Jane Russell. And Jane Russell, who, who was getting on a bit by then, she wasn't the drained Jane Russell in, in the films, you know. Uh, and uh, she took me to lunch uh, out of the lobby because I'd made a film called Alfie, which had been shown not in cinemas, but in the Hollywood circuit in the homes. And she recognized me from Alfie, and she took me. And I thought, I'm with Jane Russell. I said, where are we going to lunch? She said, in here. I said, what, what sort of lunch is that? She said, I'm a Christian scientist. And so I went to the Christian scientist lunch with Jane Russell, who was one of the great sort of sex bombers of all time. <laughs> which give you, give you an idea of my luck in life. <laughs> and, but I'm sitting there one day, and a helicopter lands in the garden, and throws out all the plants and shrubs and everybody's going nuts because you're not allowed to have, you know, and there's gardens opposite the Beverly Hills Hotel on Sunset Boulevard and this helicopter threw out all the flowers and everything really. And we all waited to see who it was and it, John Wayne had made a movie called Hondo and he had this big hat on and he was covered in dust and he had flown in on a Friday, it was Friday lunchtime and I was sitting in the lobby looking for film stars, you know, I had nothing to do. And John Wayne came in, and, and I looked at it, it was John Wayne, and I was a big fan of John Wayne, sort of all overcome. 
And then I'm, I'm sitting in this chair near the desk and he's signing and he looked around, he looked at me and he said, what's your name? <laughs> I said, Michael Caine. He said, are you in that movie called Alfie? <laughs> I said, yeah. He said, you're going to do well, kid. But let me give you some advice. He said, talk low, talk slow, and don't say too much. <laughs> and never wear suede shoes. So I said, what? He said, never wear suede shoes. I said, why not? He said, well, you'll be in a gent's toilet and you'll be taking a pee. He said, and the guy next door is taking a pee and he's going to recognize you and you're going to turn and go, Michael And he's going to piss all over your suede shoes. And he was my sort of guide and mentor every now and then, you know, when he appeared, which was very seldom. And it was quite extraordinary because my wife was very ill in hospital, and I was obviously going to see her every day in Beverly Hills. And dying in the next room was John Wayne. So I was with him when he died. Not at the instant, because I didn't know him well enough, but I mean, I used to walk up and down the passage with him. And he used to wear a dressing gown cowboy boots and a cowboy hat. <laughs> and he'd go up and, and, and go up and down the language because he used to curse his fate, you know? Because he smoked so much he had lung cancer, you know? Anyway, that's that story. Was there a question? <laughs>